investigators about a bag. Not just any bag, but a bag that belonged to Jessica Boynton and was stuffed full of dozens of her personal items. But what makes this bag so important is the events proceeding to its disappearance. Let's go back in time to about 2015. Jessica Boynton, then Jessica Lester, and Matthew Boynton began dating when they were teenagers and still in high school in Georgia. Matthew was well known, involved in sports, and the grandson of the county sheriff. Jessica's youth was much less glamorous. She was abandoned at the age of three and raised by her grandparents. Jessica fell in love quickly, seeing Matthew as her savior from an otherwise tragic life, and Matthew was quick to take advantage of the situation. Oh, God. Jessica became pregnant at just 16 years old, and with her grandparents' blessing, Matthew and Jessica moved into an apartment. Almost as soon as the ink dried on their new apartment lease, Matthew shifted from being a dream come true to a real-life nightmare. He became overbearing and controlling, cutting off her contact with her family. He would have sole access to all credit and debit cards, and would even take the keys to their truck while working in a patrol vehicle. Jessica was a prisoner in her own home, and seeking to regain some control over her life, Jessica had an affair which resulted in another pregnancy. Matt would, uncharacteristically, raise the child as his own, and they would even get married only some months later. Much more characteristically, Matthew began his own affair less than six months after getting married, which Matthew made no attempt at hiding. The relationship would disintegrate quickly, and Jessica would ask Matthew for a divorce. Sometime later, the couple got into an argument at a nearby Walmart and returned home. About 30 minutes later, gunshots were heard. A neighbor went to the window where she saw Matthew quickly get in his truck and leave the house. Matthew met with another officer at a local Waffle House, and during that time he received a message from Jessica, where she seemingly told Matthew her intent to end her own life. Matthew sent a text to his mistress and then called for emergency services while rushing home. Jessica was found in a closet with multiple gunshot wounds to her head. The event was first labeled a suicide, but defying all odds, Jessica miraculously survived. There was yep, rule number one. What did we learn from the Tory Lanez case, okay? You shoot someone, you best hope that you fucking finish the job. Because guess what? When you shoot someone and they survive... You're fucked. Also, as a cop, he should have definitely known that because that's why they fucking unload their entire uh, in, the entire ammo into the unsuspecting and oftentimes unarmed uh, victims of police brutality. But it's always the sh same shit. Yep, dead men tell no tales. That's how it works. You got a mag dump. There was a short investigation filled to the brim with inconsistencies and obvious cover-ups, which would ultimately result in Matthew walking away from the incident scot-free, and with Jessica losing custody of her children. The case seemed to be closed, and life moved on, except that Matthew would get involved with another woman sometime later, who discovered a bag of Jessica's belongings. The exact Wait, same belongings what? that Matthew said he was no longer in possession of in a sworn statement. Griffin investigators needed to speak to Matthew again. The house of cards that had been built over the years were coming down now. This is the interrogation of Matthew Boynton. I'm a bit confused. Did he shoot his, his wife in the head, made it look like a suicide, and successfully got away until later when they found her clothing? What fucking court system was like, oh, um, well, you know, you lost the custody of your children now because you almost died. Okay. Right off the bat, he's already in fucking uniform. You already know things are not going to go well, okay? And by that, I mean things are not going to go well for the slant of justice. Because when you're a thumb and you're having a conversation with other thumbs, you know that, you know, they are going to be a little bit favorable towards him, especially as it pertains to domestic violence, which is kind of a thing that cops like doing. If you don't believe me, just Google 40% Cops, Okay. Also, his granddad was the sheriff. So, you know, th things are not going to... There is no slant uh, towards justice in this, uh, in this story, it seems. 
All right, Matt, then I'm just going to start off by letting you know that, that I am not conducting an, an internal investigation on you. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. So Garrity is not implied. Okay, I want you to understand that. What? Okay. All right, Garrity is not implied to this incident. Okay. Can you fully explain what that? I understand part of it. Just. She's going to read. She's going to read you Miranda. Okay. So I just want to let you know that we're not. I'm not conducting. I know I do IAs, but this yeah. is not an IA. This is a reference to a criminal investigation. Okay. Okay. What's that in reference to? It's in reference to, you remember the um, statement you wrote me about Jessica saying you took items from the house? Yeah, that computer. Yeah. That's what it's going to be in reference to. Okay. Nepotism is the practice among those with power or influence of favoring relatives or friends, especially by giving them jobs. Nepotism runs deep within the Griffin Police Department. The detective starts out immediately by letting Boynton know that this is not related to any internal affair or IA investigation. As we will see, Griffin police are fast to protect their own, and sometimes even at the cost of a thorough investigation. Remember, Boynton is the grandson of the sheriff. The ethics of this interrogation should be immediately called into question, but simultaneously should be of no Did you say all these people look 25 at most? You think this person is 25 years old? Like, you saw that person and you were like, that's definitely a 25-year-old for sure. <laughs> what the fuck? Surprise to any outsider. If you want to talk to us, just sign right there. All right. So Jessica came in, she filed a report. Um, I talked to you about it. Uh, you wrote a statement saying you didn't have any of her items. Um, right. The report specifically said her retainer and stuff like that and clothes. Okay. Um, do you know anything about where her clothes or retainer may have been? Not like I told her before, the only thing that we might have had would have been in that white trailer and my stepdad has not mentioned anything else being in there. And we gave everything back that we had because she had put some stuff in like a, uh, it's like a little foot chase thing. Mm -hmm. You open it up, it's got two little boxes. I think we used to use it for like diapers and stuff now, but I mean, everything that she had that I knew of was gone. I got rid of everything I knew of. Get rid of a house, though. To get, either give back to her or her family came back and got it. You know, like she had a big kitchen table and some other stuff that her Aunt Kathy and Uncle Tim had come and got. Um, just different. I think my stepdad actually took a whole bunch of stuff over to her grandparents' house at 2464 East Milner mm -hmm. in Pike, which is like right by my parents' house. Okay. So, when did you move to Lou May Road? Uh, that would be sometime in March. March? Mm -hmm. um, through the course of that move, did you find anything that belonged to her at that uh, point? No, because if I would have, I would have turned it over to her, because I had no need to keep her stuff. Before this interview took place, Will Sanders had already given the police the answers that they needed. Remember, Sanders turned in Jessica's belongings, which were found by Matthew's current girlfriend in his own storage area. Investigators ask Boynton about her computer and some other items. Boynton sticks to his story, that he never had them. He digs his heels into his lie and goes all in. The only thing I had at that point was that computer and me and you had talked about that and gave it back to her. Because mm -hmm. she could let her talk to Bird. Okay. So... Detective is Max from Always Sunny in Philly. Yes, Jesus Christ. Yes, let me use to put all my gym stuff in when we, we used to be together. Okay. So when's the last time you saw that bag? Uh, it's been a long time. <coughs> like I said, I, when I used to work out at, um, there's two gyms in Thomaston. I don't remember the name of it. I used that one, and I had a uh, gray Nike bag I used to work out in. Um, so I interchanged my stuff like protein drink. Bro, she coughed immediately after the max mom reference that's crazy um, powder shakes like pre-workout uh, workout shorts pants what the cop is engaging here is a common technique that liars do all the time called over explaining in order to run out the clock this imaginary clock that somehow will uh you know allow him to get away scot-free is oftentimes run with unnecessary details that he can remember. Shoes, whatever. I'd put it in that bag or my Nike bag. 
Matthew confirms that, yes, the bag is familiar to him. He references it as something that Jessica used and may have been used as a gym bag, but he hasn't known of its whereabouts in a long time. It could have been in a storage shed, he says, obviously still unaware that his lies that he's propped up over the years have been dismantled well before this interview began. Take note that Matthew's demeanor has not wavered since the beginning. He has remained with his arms in front of him, relaxed, with his fingers intertwined. Soon we will see a drastic shift in his posture as he realizes that he's been caught not just in a lie, but a lie that will completely change his life. So when's the last time that you saw that bag? I mean, it's been a while. I don't, I don't know the exact date on that. Um, I think my stepdad, he, he had it in the, I think the white trailer, and that, that's been a while. And he brought it, but I haven't been through it or anything. Um, he put it in my storage, put it in my storage thing in my house which is like when you pull in the driveway. Mm -hmm. It's a little storage thing on the right. You open the door and it's got all my stuff in there. I declared that some of it out recently. That was tossed in there, but I mean, it's in there with a bunch of my stuff, like a brown tub I used to keep in my old patrol car with gym mm -hmm. stuff in it and work stuff. Would so, that be the utility room, my carport room at your new house? Yeah. Yeah, that's where I keep, like, or I, well, I keep stuff in that, and I keep stuff in, like, what... Bro, I'm sorry, like... When is the last time this cop actually caught someone? Like, what happens when a suspect is running away from her? Like, I can't get over this. She's having a hard time literally having a normal one-on-one -on -one conversation. I can hear her. I can hear her breathe, dude. She's IA chill poppy. That's true. They do in they do uh internal affairs. All right, that's right. Yes. She is she. Yes, she is. That's why Chad says she's like Max mom from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Also, no, IA isn't exactly good either. Like she might be uh, ultimately the the you know, good person in this story because not only is the person that she's sitting across from a cop, but also one that is, you know, one that has shot his uh, former wife. Was considered an office and left the back of my house. Mm -hmm. I just tossed it there for the rest of my job. <clears throat> That's just old gym bag. All right, Matthew. Look. Uh oh. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> you say she's by city? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Known you a long time. Yes, sir. This bag, you saw it moving when you moved from your apartment to the main road. I didn't know. And, and, and your stepdad, and Wendell, Wendell saw it. And another female saw it, all right? Okay. At the house, in the apartments, just for now. When um, you moved from the apartment. When I, when I moved, like I said, I had all my stuff in the white trailer. Matthew, and that's, not, that's not what I'm asking you. When y'all were in the process of moving, and you moved into the house that you're at now, your residence. Did you or did you not see this bag? Yes, sir. It was in my storage room in the, in the garage. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, why would I be holding a picture of this bag? I guess because Jessica wrote it into you. Why would Jessica have it if you had it at your house? Um, I don't know. I guess somebody got it from my garage or <clears> my shed. Who would have got that, it? Um, there's a couple of people. Okay. I don't know. All right. Exactly who. Detective Hayes is having a difficult time confronting Boynton about the facts at hand. He is reluctant to tell Boynton that he knows his story isn't true, but his obvious frustration with the matter gives Boynton a clue that his story isn't carrying the weight that he needs it to. Hayes gives Boynton another chance to tell the truth. If he's seen the bag in his new house, which Boynton confirms, yes, it was in the white trailer, 
They ask how it could have came back up, how someone could have gotten to it to either place it or take it, and Boynton resorts to an excuse that law enforcement is no stranger to. Someone else must have done it. Okay. And inside that bag, there were numerous contents inside of it. And one of those is this right here. You know what this is? I don't necessarily understand, like, how this is, like, a big uh, criminal charge for what, like... Like, it, it almost feels like... Maybe I'm misunderstanding it, but, like... It almost feels like that bag could have just, like, he could have, like, accidentally kept it in his storage shed or something full of, like, his ex-wife's clothes or whatever. And then, like, didn't realize that he had it or something. You know what I mean? So I don't know how this, like, pertains to... I, I, I'm letting him cook. But I just want to understand how this ties back to, like, him actually shooting her. It's like Jessica's old retainer thing. Does she have them wear together? Right. The bag was completely filled with female clothes. And this is one photo of it. That's not yours. No. No. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. That's not yours. No, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Who does that belong to? This guy, Jessica's name, wants to be Jessica's retainer thing. <sighs> if it was in that, if it was in this right here, where would that have been at? Uh, I had all of her stuff in it in line. What would it have been at? It would have been in my the garage thing like I could sit in. Which is where? Which is at my house. Which is at your house? Yes, sir. Did you buy that for Jessica? I don't recall. I don't think I did. Because she had... I think her grandparents did. Because she had retainers before she met you, right? Before y'all got married, right? I believe so. So that would make it whose property? Uh, hers. Not yours, right? Right. Yes, sir. They're like, hey, I know you might have, like, shot your wife in the head. But also, did you know property theft, including old retainers, is a crime? That's right. Fuck the other thing. But, like, <laughs> that's what it feels like right now. I'm sure it's going to I'm sure it's gonna get to that, but. Whose bag is that? Uh, Jessica's. And the contents in the bag? It's got all her stuff in it. So why would you not have brought that to us when you noticed, when you saw the bag at moving? Sarge, I promise I've not been through that bag. The last time I used Matthew, that bag I was for this. I didn't ask you that, Matthew. Listen to me, buddy. Who's <coughs> bag is this? I understand what you're saying, Miss Jessica. I should have brought it up here. You know, Next all time. things, and I don't know anything about your other issue, but all things involved in reference to this case. All the going around, the statement that you wrote. Where's the statement at? The statement that you wrote. The same statement. I didn't read the statement. I don't know what the statement said. What did it say? Uh, it's just very brief. I uh, gave Jessica a property like I gave her a computer and everything. Right. Yes, sir. Whose is this bag? It's Jessica's. Detective Hayes points out that, per Matthew's own words, it was a bag that, as far as Matthew can recall, was relegated to gym duty. But if it was a gym bag that Matthew used, there was no way that the bag would be filled with Jessica's personal items and clothing. Boynton's demeanor shifts, from fingers intertwined in front of him, a stature of certainty and authority, to lowering his hands towards his legs. This is indicative of lowering his defenses, or more specifically in this case, his immediate defenses being overpowered. Boynton knows that he's in trouble. Big trouble. But is hoping something or someone can still keep this under wraps. Matthew, a police officer. Yes, sir. I understand. You're a police officer, Matthew. You know we are held to a higher standard than anybody else. I understand. You know, people don't... don't don't expect us to make mistakes, and they don't realize we're human. I understand that. Yes, you sir. understand that. Should have been about <sighs> What? What? Is he just, is he, is he saying he's going to help cover it up again? Like, what the fuck? Hold up.
I don't get it. Like, <laughs> Gary's no longer in the room, you know? Uh, don't worry about it. I got you. You work out a lot, don't you? You stay in shape. Chunting. You're in good shape, right? Chunting. You have two bags. Did you swap your stuff in between mine? Yeah, I don't have the other one anymore. So this would have been your only gym bag. So how would you not do the contents of the bag? If this was your gym bag, man. Bro, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm not crazy, right? Can someone explain to me? Bro, this is like an insanely stupid line of questioning. Like, I, 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 not only do I not understand how the, like, gym bag is, like, related to this, and I'm sure there's going to be a big reveal in the end, but I also don't understand why he's going so hard on the gym bag thing, where by being like, well, you know, if this was your gym bag, you would know what's in it, right? Like, it's like, what, what the fuck? I have no excuse. Like, like you said, I should have, should have thought about it and brought it up here. That's like having two cars. Yes, sir. If you use two cars and you get in the other one and it's out of gas, then you're not know it's out of gas. You're right. Because you've used two cars, right? Yes, sir. If you were using this, being slap full, when I say it was slap full, I mean it was, I want to say, just just a guess of probably 30 or 40 articles of clothing in it. You would have known. I mean, it almost looked like when whoever packed this bag had packed this bag to move. in January the 9th, 2017. I was advised to complete the statement on the previous day by Lieutenant Yancey. Jessica Lester Dash Boynton's property was already previously returned to her by my stepdad, Charles McDaniel Jr. Shortly after Jessica got out That's of the That's it? It's like they're just getting him they're just getting him on perjury because he lied about bringing everything back that belonged to Jessica? I'm losing it. There's no fucking way this guy actually... This what? Uh, the dining room table, along with other items, were picked up by Kathy Zellner for Jessica. The remaining items, such as Hope Chess clothing, other miscellaneous items, returned to Jessica. I do not have any other items of Jessica's. This is Matthew Boynton. Is that your statement? Yes, sir. Who's that, Matthew? That's Jessica's bag. Retainer. You understand you didn't buy that. I understand. That does not make it community property. I understand. That makes it her property. Yes, sir. That you're in possession of. Yes, sir. I Bro, how the fuck do they let him get away? We have possession of the bag. Yes, sir. We have evidence that says it came out of your storage room. Is that true? Yes, sir. Is there anything you'd like to say? No, sir. I said I was just done with my part script. Do you believe do you believe that statement to be accurate and true? Not now. Did you believe it then? No, sir. Detective Hayes is in a position that's even worse than before. He now has to deal with Boynton as not only a suspect, but a suspect who is a uniformed officer, who is most likely guilty of a crime, who has unwaveringly lied to the police, and who is the grandson of the sheriff. Detective Hayes knows that regardless of the outcome now, his career has most likely been jeopardized. Matthew Boynton's actions have now seemingly directly affected Detective Hayes. Boynton admits for the first time the origins of the bag, that it came from his storage room. Hey, water or something, I think. 
You sure? Yes, sir. I got some right here. Thank you. Right. Let me be right back. While Detective Hayes is smoking a cigarette and pondering the predicament everyone is now in, Boynton begins to remove his gear, seemingly knowing that the end result would be his termination as a Griffin police officer. statement and lie on it. Oh, that's harsh. Why would you do that, Matthew? Oh, it was a bag, man. It wasn't. It's not like it was. Talk to me, man. I mean, help me understand. This is some hard-hitting police work. I feel safer. Yeah, I mean, look, there's, there ain't no dirty bag stealers out there running in the streets, okay? Just like there ain't no top of the hour ad watchers out here, okay? Is at the top of the hour is a three minute ad break. Now, if you no longer want to see them ads, all you need to do is subscribe for five dollars or for free. Okay, chances are you've already subscribed for five dollars or for free, or maybe you got gifted a sub. And therefore now you are avoiding the top of the hour. But if you're not, you know, those are the methods to do so. All right, here's the three-minute ad break at the top of the hour now. Yusuf Ali, 24th, thank you for the five, get the subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour either, okay? That's right, hoorah, crap sack. Thank you for the five. <laughs> Sorry, I swear, that was, that was hard to believe, but I didn't think about that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have broke. I wouldn't have broke. I said, "Hold on, little T. I got something. Let me go get it." I swear, I wouldn't have done that because I've got two kids, three and one. I wouldn't jeopardize that over a bag. If I'm telling you, sorry. If I would have thought about it then, I would have said something. But you knew you had I the bag. Did you not know you had the bag? I'm sorry. I, my mind's right. I don't. I fucked up. I know I didn't. I should have turned it in. But not only because I'm a cop, because I should. Ed, Ed, the reply guy. Thank you for the five. Get the subs. I should have returned it not only because I'm a cop, but because it was but Jessica. It was Jessica. It, it, was, it was the right thing to do, man. I'm clear. Yes, sir. Hayes returns confused and angry with a whirlwind of thoughts and emotions. He demands to know why Boynton would lie about something so trivial like a bag. Why would Boynton make sworn statements about something so inconsequential in the grand scheme of things? Matthew tries to claim that it's all a misunderstanding. Of course it must be a misunderstanding, because... Why would he lie? He has children and another on the way. It would make no sense to lie. Later interviews with Boynton's girlfriend would reveal that she had pointed out the bag several times and that Boynton thought the entire situation was nothing more than a joke, even going so far as to make light about the shooting. Why didn't you turn the bag in when you damn moved? I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking Did you think he was going to get in trouble if you turned it in late? I, I guess. I don't know what I was going through. In my mind. What do you think should happen now? No, that's probably going to happen. No, that's not what I asked you. So what do you think should happen? My kids are fucking daddy's boys, man. If I would have thought about it, I would have done it. Oh, oh. 
He's about to be like, I thought it was okay to do it when I'm on the job, man. I got too used to shooting people. It's fine, I thought. What the fuck? All the stuff that you, you see about you, you know if you were in possession of something that belonged to her. You know you should have. You could have brought it to me. You know I'm going to do the I literally don't understand why he's like so afraid because at this stage it just feels like he lied about returning all of his possessions when he didn't. Okay, who cares? Like, I, I legitimately don't understand it. Maybe you guys are seeing something that I'm not seeing, but I don't know why the fuck this cop feels so scared. The right thing, you know I have to do the right thing. I would have took care of it. I would have gotten the bag back to her. But when you knew you had the bag and you didn't do anything about it, man, you put me in a situation where I got, I don't have any other choice. I'm clear. I'm clear. In between sobs, Boynton removes the rest of his gear, placing it on the table. He says that he's been afraid every day of coming into work and having something come to light. He whimpers, saying that this is going to have an effect on his children. Hayes says something which is reminiscent of the nepotism that we've discussed. That if he would have came to him with the bag and the information, he could have made it all go away or at least framed it in a way to where it would go away. If Boynton would have taken some responsibility and tried to close that chapter, maybe, just maybe, Hayes could have helped him with a way out. But he didn't, and now Hayes and the rest of the department has been forced into a corner. There's no excuse for it. Here. I know it's got that on there. Um, it's, it's so hard, like, well, okay. I love working here. I know you do. Uh -huh. I, I was asked you. I, mean, I was so scared to come to work every day. Why? Because every time I did, you know, it was always uh, eleven seventy nine or ten twenty two to forty two. Come up here. I mean, it's always something. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I thought if I brought it up here, I was going to get fired and whatever. I, mean, I don't know. I'm but, so young and stupid. But Matthew, you know, doing the right thing, regardless, it doesn't matter. If you do the right thing, you can live with yourself. Nine times out of ten, I, I do. I, don't, I mean, that's why I was right. But the one time, I just happened to shoot my wife. Like, what the fuck is going on? I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, he got caught. He got caught with the fucking bag. I don't know. The pack bag means it doesn't make sense that she would kill herself because she was planning to leave. I know, but there's still an out there. You know what I mean? I guess ultimately it doesn't matter because the victim is alive, right? She went through a coma, lost the custody of her children. But ultimately, that's it. That's what happened. It's what But you, you know that. You know that you have to do the right thing. And when you found, even if, if you found the bag, you should have said, hey, hey, LT, hey, Sar, hey, whoever. I got something, man. Stop for a minute and talk to me. I don't know what I was thinking then. I don't know if it's because I was scared. I mean, I, I, come, I told you, I come to work every day scared. Now. There's no excuse. I'm not trying to make one for myself. Hey, LT, I, I, I shot my wife in the head. I just like, the only thing I can think about now is my kids, man. My, my kids. Daddy's boys. You know, the, the baby is actually. What? I took him in like he's my own. And I'm not setting a good example right now. Oh, my God. Wait, what? I always try to show my kids what's right. But you know, when you when you swear an oath, we swear that we're Is he saying that? Yes, sir. Regardless. And you know you can't lie. To, you can't lie in an investigation. You know that. I don't know what I was thinking. Like I said, I don't know if I was scared or what. I don't know what was going through my mind then. I, I, thought, I thought she cucked him, but I didn't realize she had a child from uh, the, the cucking. Does that make it right? No, it doesn't. I know this is everything I've ever worked for, like, out the door. My main concern is my kids, man. Because I've got, I've got primary custody over them. 
And this is going to set me back if I get locked up for this one. I'm going to go down and see them every other weekend. And she's not going to take care of them like she's supposed to. Like she's supposed to put them on her insurance. But, I had to do that. But Matthew, if you did no. what you were supposed to do, we would not be here in this situation. You think I want to be here? No, sir. I would be rather be anywhere else than be here. Clear. But if you had done what you were supposed to do, we would not even have to be having that conversation. You would have to worry about it. Yes, sir. But you know that we have to do. We have to do the right thing. We have to do what people pay us to do. You know that. You know that, especially with me and Lieutenant Yancey. You've known us a long time. Yeah. I, just, I don't want to let lose the, the primary custody of my kids. Like, I know, I mean, no matter where I go now, I'm not really going to get a good job now, but letting the main focus is my kids, man. Life is not over with. Everything happens for a reason. Just hang tight, okay? Even in Matthew's final moments as a Griffin police officer, he's given freedoms that no other suspect would. Handling his gear, checking his phone, even though Boynton has accepted that his career with the department is effectively over, the preferential treatment he received and still receives is glaring. Matthew Boynton would walk free on the attempted murder of Jessica Boynton due to the mishandling of the case by the Griffin Police Department, and the seemingly trivial win over getting her belongings back and Matthew destroying his career would be all that Jessica would get. After Jessica's recovery, she lost custody of her children. Any evidence supporting the idea that she was a victim? I'm sorry, what the fuck happened? So after all that, he did wait. Wait, 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 w